Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Why do the ladies even do the work they do? Running around, counting all those coins, wearing purple, even if it's not their color. Which, statistically speaking, there's at least 10% of those ladies wearing purple. They don't want to wear purple at all. And the hard work. And if we're very honest, probably not even the respect that they deserve to the work that they do for the church. They quietly go about this work. And with no reward, mind you, zero reward for them. For Jesus Christ has saved them. They live in the grace of God. They cannot make Jesus save them more. They're saved. And they cannot make Jesus love them more. He loves them completely. And maybe it's a question for all of us Christians. Why do we do the work or live the life of a Christian? Why put the effort forth? My guess is we have a good answer in our text when it's asked to Jesus about the commandments. Jesus gives an abstract answer, which is nice. And then he gives us a concrete way to live in light of his answer. So I'll begin my sermon, or start, go to my sermon of what we are not to live like. I will then continue to go to what we should live like in Christ. And if we live in Jesus, and we do, and you do, then you are fulfilling the words of Christ today in your life. 81% of Americans agreed with this statement when it was put to them. An individual, quote, an individual should arrive at his or her own religious beliefs independent of the church. They did an interview with someone who falls into that category. A, as she would say it, a Christian, as she, as she self-identifies, and she lives her faith on these terms with no demands other than demands that she puts on herself. Her name was Sheila. Quote, I believe in God, but I cannot remember when I went to church last. My faith has carried me a long way. I call it Sheilaism. Unquote. She is someone who listens to just that internal voice in her mind and what it does for her. And it is fine for her. Well, maybe Sheila is the way to go, folks. Let's recall the missionaries. Let's shut down the churches. Let's disband the LWML. Let's stop evangelism as we know it. This is the way to go. Allow people on their own to come to some belief in God and I'm sure it will work out just fine. I know you know I don't believe any of that that I said to you. But what does that look like? What does that kind of faith that she, that she has look like? Is her life centered on Jesus? Does she love others more than herself even? I will tell you exactly who Sheila's God is. It's Sheila at the end of the day. And I have read the word of God and I cannot find anywhere where Jesus says this. Love yourself with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I can't find it. If you find it, I'll give you a dollar. So where does that lead anyone? See, I worry maybe that you all don't believe the really really believe in the words of Christ in his teaching that you don't live it that you don't trust it you know it's his words and you respect them but maybe deep down that trust is still lacking that Jesus can and does change people that his love and the power of God is what changes people and that love even our love is very powerful in this world Love is still the center of the law. And love is still the center of the gospel. Paul tells us the law is fulfilled in love. 
And Jesus Christ fulfills the gospel in the love that he's shown to the world when he died on a cross for us. That's love. It's powerful stuff. I'm just afraid you don't believe it. I'm afraid you don't believe that Christ's love changes people. I mean, deeply changes people. And that when we partake in that love, it's the most amazing thing. There was a Christian summer camp, and the one week they were there, they had the junior high kids, junior high boys. Now, going back to our children's message, I know Jesus loves junior high boys, but they push the line. <laughs> they can be difficult. They are young men with a lot to go. And there was a boy in this camp who had some paralysis issues, including in his mouth. And so it affected his speech. And the other boys made fun of him, quite frankly, as junior high boys are known to do. He had some, uh, he struggled with speaking. So one night in the cabin, the boys all decided, and they asked this young man who had some struggles to lead the nightly devotional. And the boys thought, this is a good opportunity. We'll get more ammunition to make fun of this man, this boy. So the boy got up and he started speaking. And he struggled. He stammered. He slurred his speech. But he said these words unashamedly. And I don't know if that's a word or not, but I'm using it. He said this to those boys. And remember, stammering slurry with struggle. I got his whole devotional right here. You get it now. Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Jesus loves you. I love you too. And that was it. Honestly, some of the boys cried. They were truly changed in that moment. And they weren't changed because they were yelled at. They weren't changed because they were punished. And they weren't changed because they were felt guilty for their horrible behavior, which it was. They were changed because this boy who they treated so terribly actually showed them love. And the boy made it very clear that he loved them, not because he's a good child, but for what Christ Jesus had done for that boy, which is to love him. How does Jesus' words become fulfilled in life? He fulfills these words. He fulfills the will of his Father to love the world so much he would use all of his strength to pay for our sins on the cross. It's out of love for his Father and love for us that Christ came and did what he did. Jesus used his strength and his heart to save us. And how much does Jesus save, or love us and care for us? We Christians have been maybe, well, I was going to say too focused, but I'm going to take it back. We're not focused enough on the cross. There we see love. There we see this commandment being completely filled. There the atonement of sin happens. There Jesus' mere words have become actions. His love is now in play. It's a real thing. It's no longer abstract anymore. It's one thing to say he loves the, sin, loves the world. It's another thing to die on a cross for the world. It's concrete at that point. Our lives in Christ are marked with love. From morning to to birth, to, to bed, from baptism to the grave. So going back to the beginning, why do we love? Why do the women of the LWML love and do the things that they do? Why do we do all this work? Because Christ Jesus loved us and we respond to it in kind. I'll give you one final story this week. It happened to me. I say that because I don't know if you know when I'm telling the truth or if I'm telling you just a story. I'm always teaching the truth. Some of my stories are a little, I don't know. But this one happened. 
Middle of the week, I skipped lunch by accident. About 2 o'clock, I got very hungry. And uh, I went to a restaurant I don't think my wife would like me at, KFC. <laughs> now, KFC now, like a lot of places, do not have in dining anymore, so you had to go through the drive through No big deal. And I go up there, and there's a guy literally standing without a car trying to get the speaker to work. There must be a pressure plate in there or something. And I, I, I rolled down my window, and it's kind of rainy. And I said, what's going on? He goes, I, they don't let me in, and I got to order. I said, just move out of the way. I'll pull my car forward. Then you could talk. And then he does. And then as he walks away, uh, to walk to the drive-thru, I said, uh, ma'am, I, I still have to put an order in. And I explained it to her. She said, no problem. Uh, very clear. Uh, if you want to take me to the KFC, I'm a popcorn chicken and a Diet Coke kind of fella. <laughs> Not that big of a meal. And I go up to pay, as you're supposed to, and get my food. And the lady said, oh, the guy in front of you, uh, he paid for it, for you. And he had already walked away. I couldn't even thank him for it. Could not do it if I wanted to. This is a microcosm of what we're talking about here. Christ does something kind and loving and amazing for us. And then there's just a natural response of love. I didn't demand a free meal out of that man. I'm not even demanding anything out of Christ, to be truthful with you. I receive gifts. We receive gifts. What is it that motivates us? It's that we have been made so right in Christ's love that, well, the ladies and the gentlemen and the youth group and the elderly and the, the young and the old and men and the women in our church, we want to show love to others. Even to Sheila, by the way, in our story. So how do we Christians tell other people about Jesus? Or let me put it back. Maybe this will be. Why do we Christians tell other people about Jesus? It's how we say to Jesus, thank you for our salvation, which we did not even deserve. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those words are really about Jesus. He did that. And now we live in his love. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.